Happy day after Independence Day, everybody. Uh, Brickhouse here, and um, ran across this little article on Hollywood and Toto, and I will have to say that um, my opinion of this article is I agree with just about all of it. And it's just not me that agrees with it. There's quite a few others that would agree with it, too. Um, in fact, some of them are mentioned in this little uh, article, editorial, whatever you want to call it. So here it is. Dear Hollywood, listen to your critics or else. Hmm. Industry must consider contrarian views before another can't-miss film misses. Well, I can tell you right now, Hollywood's not going to listen to contrarian views. They don't listen to the fans. They don't listen to the fandom. They're too busy inserting their, their woke ideology, thinking that we need to make a statement instead of telling a story. Character development? Nah, we don't need character development. Our characters are just fine. Team China just gave Hollywood an earful. A Chinese propaganda outlet savaged the U.S. film industry for the failure of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. In China and fears that Hollywood's best days are behind it. The fifth, the fifth, 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 fifth film in the saga hauled in just 2.3 million in its opening frame, one of many recent box office disappointments. You know what's funny is, first of all, they're calling it a five-day holiday weekend. I don't know about you guys, but I work Monday. So I really wouldn't say it's a holiday weekend. Uh, second of all, Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny only brought in 82 million domestically through the 4th of July. Now, of course, they're trying to put a positive spin on this. And that spin is, well, look, it, it, it's, it, 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 it's about right on pace with the movie that, that's 17 years old called Superman Returns. Seventeen years old. But anyway... The prose is withering and blended with anti-U.S. sentiment. Yet, to be fair, the Global Times article has a point. Hollywood blockbusters, especially those released after the pandemic, have visibly declined in quality. Oh, no kidding. Because they've gotten more woke. Beneath the flashy special effects, the dated universality of the U.S.'s prevailing values and become, is becoming more apparent as Hollywood becomes increasingly out of touch and indulges in political correctness without knowing when to stop. Classic IPs must be squeezed bone dry before they are discarded. Chinese-based writers have an agenda, of course. Diminish U.S.-based content and promote state-controlled filmmaking, which brims with pro-China lectures. Hollywood should still give the commentary a look. Then, once the industry catches its breath, start watching videos from some of its most ardent stateside critics and their subscriber counts, like Gary at Nerdrotic. He's got 784,000 subscribers. Jeremy at the Quarterings got 1.56 million. Pop Culture Crisis, that's a Tim Pool show, 64,000. The Critical Drinker, 1.72 million. Film Threat, Chris Gore, 83,000. 
and call me Cato at 106,000. That's not even including Geeks and Gamers, Yellow Flash, Ryan Kindle at RK Outpost, just to name a few others, including the little guy, the little guy here, me, Brickhouse, with my measly um, 7,600 subscribers. I'm kind of late to the party. Better late than never, I guess. These YouTube and Rumble creators hammer new Hollywood content early and often. They do so with vigor, shredding stories, both overtly woke narratives and studio types who insult them. Remember director James Mangold's reaction to rumors that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny ditches its hero for an empowered Mary Sue type, B.B. Waller-Bridge? He said, no way! I'm shutting the trolls down over those rumors. Well, guess what? Those rumors just happen to be true. Indiana Jones played second fiddle in his own movie. To Helena Shaw, his goddaughter, B.B. Waller-Bridge. These channels also share smart, sober reasons why various films and shows fail to engage the audience. The Critical Drinker video brims with his signature snark, but he methodically breaks down why Dollar Dusty disappointed audiences. The antagonists are incompetent and comically useless. Mickelson's Voller comes across as a complete non-entity who never comes across as even remotely threatening or interesting. Mickelson's a great actor, but any actor is only as good as the script they have to work with. And that's one of his more gentle barbs. Yeah, I did find that Mad's character was a little... Almost not interesting. Quite boring. It's like he was just running through the motions. How is it possible for a studio to hate the very characters that allow them to exist in the first place? The drinker asks after describing the indie of Destiny to old, sad, worn out, and clueless. Is drinker over the top in his approach? Perhaps. Is he wrong? Hardly. Yet Hollywood's blinkered status likely keeps the views far away from the people that matter most, the creators and the suits who write their paychecks. Are they consuming these entertaining voice videos? Are they agreeing to disagree on core points made within? If not, why not? Did anyone in the room that approved the Dial of Destiny trailer raise a hand to ask if insulting capitalism is a smart way to promote a $300 million movie? If not, why not? I, I myself and others pointed that out right away when that trailer dropped. I stole it, then I stole it, then I stole it. Like capitalism. Ugh. Creators can insert any kind of message they wish into a film, but surely someone understood sticking that line in the trailer could work against the film's best interests. Disney, in particular, should be begging employees to binge-watch some, if not all, of those YouTube creators for a month and take notes. As is, the studio will lose millions of Dial of Destiny, which underperformed in the U.S. and around the world. The film's minuscule Chinese box office figures dashed any hopes the overseas tally might save the day. The aforementioned creators aren't frustrated conservatives lashing out at liberal Hollywood, some of these creators are either libertarian or apolitical. They're movie fans, nerds even, like myself. And in the case of Chato, a former TV executive willing to call out Hollywood for its mistakes. Conservatives understandably bristle at an industry promoting diversity and hard left messages at every turn. Most consumers reject tearing down iconic characters like Luke Skywalker and now Dr. Indiana Jones. We're seeing more unforced errors across the board, and it's often tied to woke overreach. The recent Grease prequel series got canceled and memory hold in record time. Disney Plus sank millions into its teen sci-fi drama Crater, 
only to yank it and its progressive messaging weeks later. You don't have to be conservative to reject woke storytelling. Just ask Bill Maher. And Bill Maher has been very outspoken in the last few months about a lot of this stuff. And now even Ice Cube is coming out about a lot of this stuff, including biological men competing against women in women's sports. That's for another video at another time. The problem isn't restricted to Disney, of course, but the Mouse House's failures get the most attention. Meanwhile, we're left with two of the can't-miss summer blockbusters, The Flash and Dial of Destiny, fighting to see which one will cost its studio more millions. Which one can go to the bottom first? Fans have been demanding Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy's professional scalp for some time, using her as a symbol for Disney's current malaise. The bigger problem is clear. Hollywood suits aren't listening to the American movie going public. And they should. But they won't. They can't. They're incapable. Not only would they diversify their storytelling efforts, but shield themselves from a cold reality. Audiences increasingly reject even sure things at the Cineplex, and China can no longer save their fannies at the box office. In fact, China might pour salt on their fiscal ruins instead. So there you have it. I myself, I listen to Nerd Roddick quite often. Jeremy at the Quartering, Critical Drinker, Chris Score, Film Threat. 